the other day on Friday show, we had to do a brief little recap of Joel Embiid dropping 70 and Carl Anthony Towns dropping 60 in a loss, by the way. Sorry, Carl Anthony Towns. I just had to throw out that. Uh, you guys did lose that game because you did not do a lot for your stock in the last, like, five, ten minutes of that game. Um, well, since then, I don't know if uh, did you guys see this, you hear about this. Luka Doncic put up 73, and then on the same night, Book had 60 again. Oh, okay. Name a more iconic duo between Devin Booker's iconic scoring outputs and still losing the game. Devin Booker, I have not forgotten that when – isn't it crazy that in the grand scheme of things, we aren't that far removed from Devin Booker's 70 piece against Boston and like all of us kind of being confused on what we were supposed to like, but like, wait, they got smacked and like he kind of was just throwing shit up because they were down by like a hundred the entire game. But at the end of the day, we were just appalled because we hadn't, a lot of us had not seen 70 in our lifetimes. Like, yes, I was alive for 81, but I was seven. So, like, it just didn't really blip on my radar, right? Culturally, I didn't get to enjoy that the way that everybody else did. Also, because, like, social media wasn't really a thing. Um, It was in its very, very brief infancy, 2006. I mean, yeah, we had, like, MySpace and Facebook was, like, only a year or two old. So there just wasn't really that much, right? Like, people are still, like, sending faxes and, like, beeper – well, beepers in 2006, not really. But now, you know, we have two 70-point games in the span of a week. And the discourse surrounding this is kind of what I want to talk about because I think that's what's the most interesting is like, okay, something needs to happen defensively. The NBA needs to look into this defensively. I think it's interesting that that's uh, people's first reactions to it. I understand why because when you look at a lot of the final scores for these games, like even taking the individual scoring outputs aside, right? Dude's putting up 60 and 70 like seemingly ad nauseum. Um I think it's the consistent 136 to 141 final scores that are kind of starting to rub people the wrong way. Like, what's going on? And it's, you know, is it easy? Is it as easy to say, well, they're not letting dudes play defense and the offense is the best that it's ever been? I'd love to see you try to guard Luka. Anybody, by the way. I'd love to see anybody try to actually guard Luka. Try to implement a rule that eliminates that little shit that he does at the rim where he just floats in the air, waits for the defender to go by, and then he puts it up. I'd love to see hand-checking stop Devin Booker from taking a DHO, getting two dribbles on the floor, getting to his spot on the elbow, and just pulling up right between the eyes. I'd love to see hand-checking stop Joel Embiid from lulling someone to sleep in the paint and just using, what is he, like 260 probably? Using all of his weight to just bully somebody. Right? Like, it's not always just going to be that easy. Now, I also would love to know what the numbers would say, like, if you just add hand checking. It just always feels really lazy to me when people say, oh, they need to bring back hand checking. My most radical take on this would be eliminate three in the key. Let guys camp in the post. Seriously. And I know that all that's really going to encourage is dudes shooting more threes, and then that's going to result in either more inefficient games or on some nights, even higher scoring games, because I don't know if you guys know this, but three points is worth more than two. So that's what I would say. Sure, do the hand-checking thing if you want. I don't know what the data says, and you're going to be like, well, look back at the 90s. Dude, it's not even the same game. So that's why I'm saying I don't know really what it's going to do, but sure, I guess if you want to throw it in, eliminate three in the key. That is like the hardest zag that I can do on this subject. Um, Because I really don't like being the guy who is sitting here talking about like, oh, this is bad for basketball. This is bad for business. And this isn't fun. Because in 15 years, when the NBA in some sense kind of reels this in and gets it under control, we'd like to imagine. I mean, hey, in 15 years, guys are going to be even better. Uh, They're going to be even more skilled on offense. Because I also think it's – look, I never played basketball in an organized way. I only ever played football. So when we, when, when it, when it, when it comes to like logistics of the sport, I feel more comfortable talking about football because I actually lived it, but I didn't live basketball. So here's what my take on it would be. Isn't it way easier, you know, 15 years down the line, or even if you want to look back 15 years for dudes to get better on offense than it is on defense. 
it's so much easier to diversify your bag and like invent moves and shit than it is to really defend them because there's only so much that you can do defensively like sure you can work on uh your footwork you can work on your coordination you can work on i don't know communication you can work on physical strength um stuff like that but it seems like it's easier to throw together not like tiktok dribble packages not like the like julian newman bullshit that that's not even basketball it's not real but something closer to like what Devin Booker was doing to the Pacers the other night. Um, cause truthfully, some of those buckets were disgusting. His was a lot more finesse. Uh, Lucas kind of was too. I'm just talking comparatively to like Embiid who, who, like I said, was just kind of sheer force. And that's all that it was. Um, I don't want to be the guy who's bummed out about this. Cause again, in 15 years, we're going to look back as like, this is some proverbial like golden age of basketball where kids are going to be like, wow, like people were scoring that much. Like it's not going to be fun when guys can't crack 45. And yeah, that'll make it way more special when a dude puts up 50 because now what's the take? Uh, 70, 60 is the new 50. I'm not going to say 70 is the new 50 because 70 still blips on our radar. But it's weird because now I don't know if you guys know this. I have been editing videos for uh, Rusty Buckets on his second channel, which is called also Rusty Buckets. So if you ever see a video put up on there, uh, go ahead and give it a watch, give it a like, support me, support Jacob. Uh, let me know how I'm doing on the edit, by the way. I'd love that. But he made a point the other day that I thought was really interesting because he was right. So Embiid puts up 70 and we get bored of talking about it after a day? Huh? When Book put up 70, look, even if we were talking about, like, how valid it was, you know, because, like I said, they were down by 100, and he was just kind of throwing shit up, and it was like, who cares? No one else on this. Who was even on that Suns roster? Was it, like, Marquise Chris? Was he there yet? Um, was, like, Drajan Bender there yet? I don't, I don't remember the timeline. It was, like, six years ago, seven years ago. But who else was going to be doing it on that Phoenix Suns team? It was, like, Brandon Knight? I don't even know, right? People were still talking about it for, like, a week, though. No matter what the discourse was, it was still part of, like, the zeitgeist. And because we're so desensitized to it now, and this is where I empathize with people, we talked about Embiid for two days, if that. You know? And then the, and then the conversation immediately shifted to, oh, he's not going to play against Denver? Like, what a, what a little... Is Joel Embiid bitch made? Like, that's what people wanted to talk about all of a sudden. And I guess, in a sense, it makes sense. And it's also because, well, Luca had just dropped 70, and so we kind of moved on to the new thing. I mean, when in a span of a week you have two guys drop 60 and two guys drop 70, what do you want us to do? You know, in a span of, what, the last year and change, we've had four 70 pieces now? That's that's what it is, right? Huh? Talk about the Lions waiting my whole life for a team like this just for it to go down this way. We wait our whole lives for dudes to put up scoring performances like this. Four of them happen in the span of a year. Two of them happen in the span of a week. And we're just kind of like, oh, yeah, anyways, what else is on? What? That's crazy. Because I think two things can be true that it's annoying but it's also like these are anomaly seasons people romanticize the steroid era of baseball because all it was was just like mark mcguire and sammy sosa battling to like who who can hit 60 home runs first or 50 home runs first whatever it was right that's what people were getting up for you know do i think that in in 10 years they're gonna be there's gonna be some revelation that a bunch of these guys were like taking HGH and a bunch of other PH PEDs, PhDs. I don't think any of these guys are, you know, you know what I mean though? Like, um, well, what's weird is like LeBron's just gotten away with it for 20 years. It's, is it, is it the biggest open secret in sports that somebody has been taking PEDs their entire life? And we're all just kind of like, sure, but it's LeBron. Like, and I'm being serious. In five years, if there was a bomb that dropped that, you know, Fox News comes out and is like, golden boy of the NBA, LaChina James, found taking human growth hormones and, and us, you know, whatever other PEDs, are we not all just going to be like, uh-huh, like, what else? Like, what's the story? 
what's the bomb, Fox News? And they're going to be like, that he's taking HGH. And we're all going to be like, uh-huh. You know, is that why I think Luca and Joel Embiid are putting up 70? No. No, but it's the principle of we loved the steroid era of baseball when dudes were, when stats were just fucking to the moon. But in basketball, we're just not able to enjoy it. Why? I don't know. But I also, again, I empathize with those people, and I am also desensitized to it, and I think it's annoying. Wow, Nick, great podcasting to be like, I think both groups of people are right. But they are. But they are. And I'm sorry for being a diplomat, but by the way, that's not the worst thing in the world because that's how you end up with Skip Bayless is when people are like, no, I have to have an opinion on this. I have to be in, in one camp, and that's it. I can't have any other opinions on this. Because then even when you're presented with evidence that would suggest that the other uh, you know, group is right, you just have to go, you just have to zag so hard and, and be like, nope, they're wrong, they're idiots, and then you like alienate yourself and you radicalize yourself to something that's not even real. <sighs> NBA points are at an all-time high. NBA enjoyment is at like an all-time medium. It's weird. Now and let's move on. Control. Beautiful, beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful.